Hello, hello, hello again. It's your boy AJ Red. I'm back with another episode of the AJ Red Show. And tonight we're going to be covering The Real Housewives of Atlanta, The Reunion, Part 3. Y'all want to discuss this boy shit? I guess so. I try to liven it up. It's the AJ Red Show. Starring me, AJ Red. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Now let's get into it. Hello again, it's your boy AJ Red, and welcome back to another episode of the AJ Red Show. It's me, your boy AJ Red. I'm back again, like I told y'all before in the preview, to discuss this crazy, boring ass, fucked up episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, The Reunion Part 3. Y'all want to discuss it? Of course we do, right? But before we jump into that, Let's take the time now. For those of you, if this is your first video, go ahead and now hit that notification bell. That's the little bell in the corner. I think it's over in the right-hand side somewhere right there. It says subscribe. Yeah, that's it. Click that motherfucker. That's the button that's going to cause you to get all these notifications when I upload these videos so that you guys will be one of the first ones to view this footage, right? Yes. And also, in every video you take the time to watch, also take out the time, hallelujah, to hit that thumbs up button. That's the like button. Yes, that gets the like on the video. I love those. Those help me out a lot. New subscribers, I can't, again, say I cannot thank you guys enough for coming aboard, joining your boy, and these comments and everything, these views y'all cutting up. Um, it is so fucking funny. So welcome aboard again. For my old subscribers, yes, my old subscribers, the ones who have been down since day one, I appreciate you guys and love you just as much as my newbies. Also, same for you. Don't forget to cl uh, click that notification bell and that thumbs up. So anyway, moving right along with the episode. Jumping right in. The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Part 3 Reunion. Let me just say, I think I've said before that I don't understand why the fuck we had to drag this all the way out to three parts. Because it really wasn't all that interesting throughout the season. I mean, yes, there was a lot of drama with Drew and this little drunk friend of Sheree's and you Sanya and you Sanya, your girl Sanya and um, Drew and Sanya and Sheree and Drew and Sheree. it was the shit was just going around and around and around and about. And of course, Marlo gave us all the bullshit and fuckery. I think we all could stand. Damn near the true definition of acting like trash. When we came to find out that she had, you know, a few deeper scars than we all knew about. Wish she should have put some new spawn on the motherfuckers back in the days of called psychiatry, counseling. Fix yourself. Go to Iyana. I don't think she in that business anymore, but I'm pretty sure she'll take a private phone call and possibly that chick. Um, Andy asked Sheree if she was offended by the she by Sheree don't pay us. Sheree, she by Sheree someday, well, which is my thing, or the she by Sheree, um, you know, line that's never going to happen. And she by Sheree don't pay. It's all, I mean, it's just all, it's all fact. I mean, at the end of the day, she said it her goddamn self on the last episode, part two of the reunion, I think it was, when she said she paid those she think that need to be paid. You pay those that offer you, uh, that deliver services to you, whether you are uh, okay with the services, satisfied, you know, you have to pay them something. You can't just go around and asking folk to do work for you, Sheree, and not want to pay a bitch. Um, she said people need to find some new content. Well, Sheree, we'll find some new content when your name, when you stop giving us episodes and fucking storylines of you out here not paying your contractors, not paying the people for these goddamn, uh, uh, um, what you call it, fabrics you was talking about, all this other extra shit. And apparently, like I said, allegedly, Sheen and Amazon is suing her ass. I don't know the whole details and the story of it. I may look into it. I don't know. I'm not a fucking lawyer. But I may look into it just to get the juice. And report it back to y'all and see what's going on. If y'all know if the suit is on, drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all done read, what y'all know. Throw y'all friend a bone so I can talk about that shit and put it up on the platform. Not to dog Sharia or anything, but I mean, stay in your lane because you mind the other folks' business. When you've been up on this whole season, been made a goddamn fool out of by trying to call Tyrone and him not picking up in the last couple of episodes. So, you know, when you start paying people and actually start delivering on shit and delivering on your own damn and your own thinking methods, I guess we can actually get rid of it and find some new content. Um, Sheree said Drew back then looked at like a, a busted can of biscuits. Now listen, to use that term about a bitch, you must be really mad with her, some, uh, fit in some type of way, or she really looks like a busted can of biscuits. And I'm going to say I'm glad Sheree took that fucking comment back because that was not true. I mean, 
maybe before the mommy makeover Drew got, maybe she did, you know, when she showed us her little side fat and her um side boob and shit before she got the mommy makeover and started dropping it with Drew. Maybe the bet, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe the biscuits did start coming out the can a little bit. You know, I don't know. Pillsbury, I, fuck, I don't know. Ain't your mama, whatever kind of biscuit they got out there nowadays. But what, anyway, in that side-by-side -side picture before the makeover, it did seem like a, a, a Michelin man situation. But I'm so glad, hallelujah, that she got to drop it with Drew and lost some weight in 30 days and had her mommy makeover. Um, but in the end, this shit was really funny. Uh, they mentioned about Drew throwing that bone to that girl on that on that on that trip. I still say that shit to me was so it was it was so funny. I mean, she said because she's an actor and she likes props and all this other shit. I'm so glad that nobody brought a gun to the scene because of all this props uh, situation. But with them with that bone she threw out there, the shit was kind of funny. And then she made that that uh, dog sound. It, it kind of took me back to that movie Crooklyn. I can't stand watching that movie, y'all. Crooklyn, when that lady dog, them little girls was running around there for that sleepover. And they fucked around there and was sick of that dog and they're sick of that auntie. And the dog was was missing. And the woman was in the backyard. If you ain't watch the movie, go look at it and see. It's called Crooklyn. It's an old ass movie, too. And they was sick of that little yapping ass dog. And the lady was out there in the middle of the night in the yard calling, Queenie! Queenie, all that shit. I just wanted, you know, Drew and oh, the funny part was when they when she finally found the dog, when she pulled out the silver bed and the dog just popped out the motherfucking hit the floor. She about there lost her fucking mind and the little girls was just killing themselves laughing because they stuffed this little ass up in there in the first place. But I just wanted Drew to holler like here Queenie or some shit like that. That's what that's the moment it took me back to. And it took me some kind of offer. Um like I told y'all before, the reunion to me was boring. Yeah, there were some high points, you know, a little shit got stirred up, a couple of things or whatever, but I'm not saying I wanted them to be fighting and all this other extra shit, which they gave us a plenty of drama in the first place, but I'm just saying, like, um, the storylines, a lot of them didn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the fact that Marlo had the boys, the fact that she got them, it made sense, but the whole debacle about getting rid of them and putting them out and all that shit, to me, that was to, like, to like harp on her storyline to give her a little shine and light a little you know since she's new to the group not to say she's the only one new to the group because sanya and i do believe this is drew's um first season so all three of these ladies are actually new cast members to holding the peach these three over here have been in line before where these two have been reigning for a while and sheridan got put off and then come back she had to go hold an apple somewhere under the yum yum tree for a while but then she came back they <laughs> They got a little disparate over there. Look like at the housewives, and they pushed Sheree back on the thing. Um, Sheree and Drew are still arguing about the employment of Anthony. The bottom line is it all boils down to y'all basically had a bad interaction with an employee. Whether both you both hired him, one of you hired him. The bottom line, I told y'all in the first episode that Anthony was gonna be a, a he was gonna cause some shit. He done got up on that guy that's fifteen thirty. One hour, whatever, of fame combined in these, you know, 11 fucking whatever episodes of whatever have you of this season. And he got his name and his face out there, I guess, as a hairstyler. But who the fuck gonna want him after all the mess they done seen him create over here on the thing with these ladies? But then again, who knows? They'll probably create a show with some shit like that, like um, the Scrunton Housewives of Hair or some shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, just throwing shit out there, but. I wouldn't, I, we all knew in the beginning that this young man was going to be a problem. And even Andy said, you know, it's fucked up. The bottom line is he done just split the two of y'all apart, you know, and got y'all turned against each other because he's saying one thing and doing something else. And he's doing it on both ends, both Drew's side and Sheree's side, because we all saw through the uh, the season, he was siding with Drew. And I guess maybe because, that, because that's what he was employed. And I thought she was never going to get rid of his ass. But something happened to where he, you know, separated employment with Drew, and now she's saying he's not her assistant, but she clearly stated that he was back during that time. He's on Sheree's side now. I don't know if Sheree done paid him or what, but um, he on her side. Now, he said he ain't say this, he didn't say that, but then he might have said at some point that uh, Ralph was gay or some shit like that, you know, and started a whole bunch of bullshit and mess. Um, the house husbands joins the stage. I will say the look on the fellas, that white for everybody was really nice. I was uh, more so taken aback by, I think the lapel, the wires, LPN, 
that Ralph wore, that was some real classy shit. All of the fellas looked really good, I'm not gonna lie, stepping onto the stage. And they were trying to, they were in the back trying to get um, Ralph and uh, Ross ready for like, you know, all the hard questions and all the harsh shit and all the shady shit that was gonna come their way on the stage from the ladies and also definitely from uh, 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 Andy's messy ass. Um, the shit was brought up about, I think, with uh, um, Ralph. Andy was being shady as fuck when Ralph came out there. The first thing he did was welcome the guys to the stage, and he proceeded to say, hey, look, my back and my neck and shit hurt me. Do you happen to know of a good masseuse that I get hold of? Being messy and shady as fuck. Now, one thing I will say that I have noticed actually during this, um, this encounter with Ralph and Drew like they said, that counseling shit over there, whatever doctor they got, I would love to have him in any circumstance because he is actually working miracles over there at the household. He was doing like Shirley Caesar said, you know, they was next in line. And honey, they done moved right on up to Dr. So-and-so, and he over there treating them real good and putting ideas up in their mind and, and you know, helping them exercise their shit and realize what marriage is about and give and taking all that stuff ever and flow. Um, Rob, I'm sorry, Ross was act, asked about when he was taking up for uh, his wife in Jamaica when she was being, some would say ambushed, but she was not being ambushed. She called that smoke to her motherfucking table with Kenya and them and she just couldn't handle it. And her husband had to get up and tell all them to back the fuck off. Well, in this moment now, Ross admits that he was a little fiery. He didn't mean anything by it. He was just defending his wife, his spouse, his mate, which is what we all should do, you know, in a moment like that. And it's, even if it's against other people that you love, the bottom line is it has to go down that way. But he did say he apologized to Kenya, which she fucking admit he apologized to us. Now, I don't understand why the fuck they dragged her all the way out to the end of the motherfucking season in the first place. You could have been said just like Candy and Marlo made up over a bucket of motherfucking Kentucky Fried Chicken over there in Jamaica. Now, look, that's another thing. Sanya say that... Uh, that Kentucky Fried Chicken is, is magical. She said it's, some whole, it's a whole different bird. I don't know what the fuck they're using over there, cockatoo. Uh, I don't know what kind of bird they're using. Maybe it's not real chicken because if it's that motherfucking magical and it ain't over here in the U.S. and it's over there in Jamaica, I, I'm just saying, what bird is it? The toucan sand bird? Is that little blue bird, you know, walking around with no, no legs, barely hopping around and shit like that because I would tell y'all about that, but I ain't trying to be fucked with it, but that little blue bird, Maybe that's, I don't know, maybe that's what's coming from Jamaica over there at the KFC. But I would love to visit Jamaica and try a box, a bucket, like they say, of they motherfucking famous fried KFC chicken over there, and I want it extra motherfucking crispy. Um, moving on, is it fair? Drop down the comments and let me know, is it fair that Candy is asking that in her untimely demise, if she goes first, that Todd, uh, that he doesn't remarry? Is it fair? Do you all think it's fair? Drop down in the comments and let me know. Is it right or is it wrong? I'm going to tell you what the fuck I think. Bottom line, she explained the shit. She said, you know what? As my grandfather, he had property, basically had money and shit, and basically he married some woman, and he left everything to her, and ergo she fucked off all his kids, and I guess grandkids too, and left them standing in the dark. Butt boot ass, naked, shaking in the cold like a 57 Chevy in the wintertime with no gasoline in it. You know, she just, he just, she, she just left him out there. So Candy's saying that in her mind, in some likes, if you really look at it, she don't trust hard. And I would kind of say in that likes, I wouldn't either. Because if I was in that situation and I figured he would go before me, and the way you're treating your own blood motherfucking daughter, you ain't finna do that to my mom and daughter. No siree. So with that being said, I'm going to allocate different for each and leave what I have to leave proportionately and you know what I'm saying because if she leaves I guess he's going to be running the whole empire so with that being said you know if he marries some other bitch and bring her up off in the house or some shit like that then 9 to my 10 she's going to think she runs the motherfucking place she's going to be the ruling queen and all this bullshit and you know I'm not saying that's the way it'll go but I mean hell this 2022 bitch is looking to get money and Todd like the strip clubs so you be the goddamn found some naked ass bitch that wanna lay around and take up all the money and shit. And y'all know Candace's mama is not used to living like no fucking peasant. And neither is her children. And cause y'all know mama like to buy a house, tear that bitch up and buy nothing, tear it up and sell that one, tell Candy about it later on. She do all that kind of crazy shit. So you know, she can't be left living in no nursing home or in no motherfucking shim shack when Candy goes to the upper room, if she goes first. So I just say, fuck it. If you're going to let him, this is my thing. Allocate for each person. 
set them all up their own trust and their own money and set your motherfucking wheel up and give him what you want him to have. And if he spend that on that bitch and he, he, they go broke, then they're just going to be out there broke together, but booty ass naked, out here in them people's streets. But it's not going to be on your dime for long. I don't know. I'm not Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving out legal advice, but I'm just thinking of a plan, a master plan. Go down there and find your good old attorney, Ken. I'm sure you pretty much got it. Todd showed us the new pictures, a snippet, a little video of the uh, condo that he had in New York. And I will say I, I love it. I'm, I'm listen. I love homes and shit like that. I'm a real estate at mind and heart, and um, it was it was laid out really nice. The colors and everything really came together. Um, keeping that stairwell, that spiral, uh, reshaping it, the balcony. I mean, everything looked good from the floors to every fucking thing that he showed. He didn't show the upstairs part, but the portions that he did show looked really good. Um, but yes, that's for that. So apparently Ken is on board with it now because they, apparently they're staying over there like he planned on doing while they're in New York instead of paying for a hotel or some shit, including the family. They're also coming out, she said. But this was back then way younger ways. So um, when it comes to Ralph, about getting his point across now, like I said before, I feel like he and Drew are doing a lot better. I think he finally got the message. Like Betty Wright said, I think he found, I mean, uh, what that woman named uh, Gladys Knight, I think it was. Yeah, they finally got the message when she did that song, We Belong Together. Yeah, that song, when she re did all that. Yeah, he finally got the message. He understood, you can't talk to this woman like that. Although she's a little dingy, you know, she ain't the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree, but at the end of the day, you married the motherfucker, so at the same, at the same time, you know, change the fuse. I don't know, change the bulb or something. I don't know to tell you, but at the end of the day, you cannot have a wife and talk to her the way that Ralph was talking to his and treating her in the way he was. Now, they both had a lot of uh, faults if we looked at the episode throughout. They both was giving bullshit, fuckery, and baloney, you know, back and forth to one another throughout the whole season. But I'm so glad to see that they are in such a better place and that they're actually focusing on themselves. Um, and actually, you know, focusing on their marriage and doing better with that. Uh, <clears throat> now, I still can't say I agree with, with how rap got the book deal. It was kind of shite then fucked up. Now, how you gonna go and write a book about my child, our family, and us, but you didn't discuss your dream about writing this book? You done thought all this shit out, planned it out, and you now have taken a flight to Chicago and went sign the motherfucking deal and then come back here and take me to Joe's Crab Shack and tell me all about it? Listen... Now that was the wrong kind of delivery. That was wrong, friend. Ralph, that was wrong as fuck. You, how you gonna do some? That's like you flew over to Chicago and then come back with fucking gonorrhea and we got the shot and they didn't tell her about it. But now you gonna tell her about it over Joe's crab shack? Yeah, STD and book signing. They may not equal out, but fuck you. Get the motherfucking uh metaphor, the scenario. Understand? Yes. And now you want her to just get along with it and be okay with that and. It's not cool, so hopefully they still working through some shit when it comes to the, uh, their therapy. When they, I hope they're still discussing that shit, too. Um, uh, Todd called out Marlo because they had their little bickering back and forth, so to speak, about, you know, how Marlo said how about she shouldn't be going after people's husbands and all this different stuff. When she's talking about them, she should have kept it with just her and Candy. should have never included Todd, and she'll never do that again. Now, Todd wasn't wearing, I think, a white suit. I think he was wearing black, I think fucking remember but um bottom line of it, of it is marlo apologized but then todd they, they somewhere lost communication and todd called out on some shit and told us hey listen here remember when i told you you was thirsty and you, you wanted to be around a group of folks and all this different shit and hang around us he was saying the bottom line is you when, when he said a couple of episodes ago he said basically she bought her way into the circle he was saying he was saying that in aspects of to hang around the group of ladies, these, this group of ladies, to get on this show, she was thirsty. She was kissing their ass, running up behind them, you know, paying for her own trips to Africa when they did the Africa trip, you know, a few seasons back. I think Nene was on then and went to Africa. She paid for her trip, her hotel. She's like, I don't think I paid for my hotel. Bitch, you lying. You lying. And now he done aired your motherfucking ass out on TV, and now you're going to sit there and try to deny half. Don't deny half of it. Just admit to it all, bitch. It was the same. You had to pay for your shit to go up over there. And you had to run up behind them ladies to see if they would give you a time of day to be a friend of yours to actually put a whisper in somebody's ear to get your ass up on this show holding a peach. And you done worked all that long time and did it. I mean, I'm, I mean, everybody got to get their hustle in. I get you. You did what you had to do. 
But you came up on this platform around all these other ladies with this motherfucking fierce attitude, which you should have. But you came with the same attitude of they owe me or bitch. I'm, I'm the bitch that worked up on here. I'm the boss bitch. Yes, you did. You did. You just did it in a different way that everybody else did it. And if you would just be woman enough to stand up in your own motherfucking truth and admit it and say, you know what? Fuck it. And she, I think some point she did, she said, I was kind of thirsty. But she said it real low on the mic. Go back and rewind that shit. I was kind of thirsty though. You was, like he said, you was a big goat motherfucking thirsty. For you to pay for your African, uh, African trip, that shit ain't cheap. And you got Louis V and all this bullshit, you know, going over there. No, you bought, you did buy your way into the circle. You had to keep your, you had to do the upkeep to stay around these ladies so that you can be a part of the circle. So that when time came around for new casting, that you would be one of the ones first in line to be considered to be put on the platform and the casting of these ladies. I mean, well played. I mean, hey, you did it. You got, you got yourself on this motherfucker. I see that. But you still fucking with Candy talking about Candy ain't worldwide. Now you go sit there and say some bullshit about if me and Candy go to Paris or London and something go to any of the fashion houses, uh, I'll be able to get in and Candy probably couldn't. You sound just as stupid as you did when you told that woman people in Atlanta know her only. You sound like a... you. That's what I'm saying. You can't be an educated woman amongst other folk that at least pretend well to be educated and say some stupid ass shit like that. That's stupid. Oh, well... And, but just like if Candy went to a recording studio or a hip hop concert, she'll probably get in. Them bitches will let you in. They know your big face, your pie face ass from over there from the uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. They know your thirst ass. They know Miss Travel, Miss Fashion, uh, Miss Fashionista. They know you over there in them uh, 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 hip hop clubs and all of other things, strip joints and all that shit. Just like they know Candy at the Opera House, you know, the Fashion House and all this shit. Like she hadn't, just like Kenya said. The same way they would give you a, an offer you when you come in there to bring you to the back of Gucci or Louis Vuitton, the same kind of shit they would do for Candy. Bitch, I, I don't know what you think. You must have been snipping powder, doing you too much of that Red Bull, or uh, had too much wine or something. But you is you you got to be out your rabbit ass mind to keep coming at that woman with that same ragged ass bullshit. But listen, if so facto, bottom line, oh, I got to get to Jamaica and try some of that KFC. Oh, they said it is it, it's delicious. <laughs> I just looked down again and thought about it. I see in KFC in Jamaica. They say that shit is magical. And these bitches was really mad with each other. But Candace said she had thought it over, learning from Todd that, you know, let a bitch make you mad. Don't let that shit harp on you and build up and fester and turn you into some kind of mad, angry, bitter motherfucker for the rest of your day or your life. That moment happened. Y'all got past that moment. If you're going to choose to deal with this motherfucker, look, hey, look, I ain't like what you said to me. You ain't like what I said to you. Let's just apologize, shake it out, and move the fuck on. How about that chicken breast, though? How about that breast right there at the top? That No, that crispy one right there on the lip. Yes, hand me that one. And please don't forget that wing, because I'm pretty sure my boo gonna watch that wing. Hand that motherfucking bucket over. But it was all about chicken. Like she said, she she said it wasn't all about chicken, but y'all know y'all know Candy thick ass likes to eat. She don't like missing meals and probably sitting up in that airport waiting on that plane to come by there and pick them up and bring them on back yonder ways. She got a little hungry and she didn't want to stand in that long ass KFC line. And she figured that Marlo did the leg work that she can be good enough for friend. Hallelujah. To say, listen, the Lord has told me to step to you and talk it to you and maybe apologize it so I can get one of them breasts out that box. Bucket, sorry, out that bucket. One of them chicken titties out that bucket. One of them wings, a thigh lick. Can't like she more of a thigh chick. She like she like dark meat. I think she like I think she'll fuck up some good dark meat down into the KFC. I don't think she pretty much me. Give me a fucking breast or some wings. I ain't got time to be looking for it. Give, I pinch all of it off there. They say I'll never eat chicken, right? I don't give a fuck. I eat what I want off that bitch and toss the rest to the side. But anyway, wrapping up, they came out and tell asked all the ladies what the fuck they expected and what they learned and all that shit. I'm not even gonna go through all that because nine times out of ten, what the motherfuckers say they learned there is not gonna exercise when it comes to the next season. Anyway, wrapping up, they brought out some She by Sheree giveaway toys for the ladies. Now, listen, Sheree says she ain't have enough to bring everybody one of each bitch. So you get on this rack and you're going to pick out your water jug. You, you might get you a bike. You might get you a sweatshirt. You might get you a t-shirt. But hurry up on over here. It's like when one of your coworkers or somewhere go on vacation to like Jamaica or Africa and they bring back a bunch of shit. And they sit it all up in the break room somewhere, I'll bring it down and say, look, I brought some stuff back there. Y'all go back there and choose what y'all want. That's, 
That's what it seemed. Excuse me, what Sheree did. She just wheeled the shit out. And she had that man without that livid ass car, like it was so much shit on there. He could have brought that out there on a, uh, a dinner card. <laughs> he could have brought them t shirts out there, folded the fuck up on a dinner cart and a water jug. And that one bag that's sitting there, because ain't but one of them bitches was gonna get no uh, a gym bag, and they may as well get that to uh, Drew for go, go down there to drop it with Drew and hang out with the She by Sheree bag, with the She by Sheree giveaway. Listen. I still ain't went down there yet and bought my mug. I'm still trying to see if the channel, I mean, if the page and shit gonna be legit or if she gonna get sued or what. I don't know what the situation is, but I think the page is still up. So if the page is still up tomorrow, I might go ahead and buy me a mug and put it up here on the platform um, and let y'all see what I bought. Listen, also, I wanted to include two before I close out because that's all I got for this show. I ain't got much on them. They was boring as fuck these uh, last three uh, seasons of this, uh, not season, these last three episodes of this reunion. They didn't really do too much. The plane didn't really get off the ground. It didn't really too much. Fuck, it ain't leave the runway. You know what I'm saying? But before I go, I also wanted to um, put this out as well. So what I'll be doing is I'll be also including, be including a link. And also, uh, maybe a probably a, my P.O. box and everything, some information. Because what I want to do is, if any of you guys out there have any merchandise of yours that you want to send, that I can actually put on my platform to add, to, to to put up here for free, for free, to to just to let everybody see your product, let everybody see what you have, what you got going on, and stuff like that, and put you out here in front of the world and shit. If you try to put your face up on the camera, give me your product, I'll put it up here for you. That's cool. And I ain't even asking you for nothing. But if you want to send it, there'll be a link to put that too. It's up to you. I'm just trying to help somebody. So with that being said, um, that will be coming soon. I will also be putting up information for that soon. I will let you guys know. But I want you to now know to be on the lookout for that. So I'm announcing it now. So be on the lookout for that because that will be coming sooner than you think. So again, I will say if you have product of your own that you wish to um, send me a sample of and you know, something you want to give me or show me or, you know, something like that, your product, you know, you're lying. Like I said, about help, uh, helping somebody, send me your product, your, your, what you have going on. I'll be glad to put it up on my platform and show it to the people and see what they think about it and see if they want to buy it. You know, and drop, you, drop your link down in the description and everything. I'll drop your link in the description for your product that day when I actually do my video. All right, so coming soon, all right? So, with that being said, also again, thank you guys for joining the channel. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and share. And, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and share. You know, uh, share with somebody you know. Share with a motherfucker you don't know. Share with a son bitch you like. Share with somebody you can't stand. Because 9 to my 10, I guarantee you, if y'all don't get along, I'll get along with them. Just like I get along with you. I'm the money in the middle. I told you that. All right? So, all right. Love yourselves real good. And love those in return that are willing to give you the same back. All right? Until the next video.